Okay, hello and welcome to the Computer Vision Podcast. Today is about detecting a calibration grid. So first I'm gonna open a video of the calibration grid which I captured earlier. So this is a video file. Um, I have the file name here, so now I can read images and in order to display it I load the Xvideo extension. So let's have a look at this. Um, with the correct frame rate, so I can as sh shown in earlier podcast, <coughs> as I've shown in an earlier podcast, I can display videos. So that's a video. This is showing a calibration grid. And we want to detect that grid now. We want to detect the corners of this grid. And these corners, then we can use later for doing actual camera calibration for 3D vision. But uh, this podcast is about just about detecting the corners. So it means ignoring the background corners and just detecting the corners of the calibration grid. So first, obviously, we need a corner detector. Um, here I'm using a custom corner detector. So first, um, I'm going to design, I'm going to make some filters. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the concept. So basically it's a steerable steerable pattern. Uh, one moment. Uh, that's one. So let's say I want a steerable pattern with size 21. Uh, sorry I was just getting ahead of myself. Uh, and the size divided by 2 minus 1 by divided by 2 is 10. And now I can <coughs> use a kind of tensor expression. I can just say this one. Yeah, this one would create me an array. Or if I say this one, it will put i in there. If I put this one, j. And I can uh, use this construct. This is a Ruby closure where I can basically define the elements. Now I, I I want to have coordinates which are zero at the center for the computation. And I'm gonna now compute the radius. The radius to power of two is that one. Take negative the radius divided by some number. <coughs> And I take e to the power of of that of that one. I'm sorry. Um, I divide this by x and by y. And I'm just going to compute this pattern. And if I show this pattern, so it's a 21 by 21 pattern. If I display this pattern after normalization then that's how it looks like and I'm in a similar fashion I'm gonna define another pattern which is 40 de 45 degrees rotated so again I'm gonna define X and Y and this one was my previous pattern and now I say X plus Y times X minus y and this is actually x to the power of 2 minus y to the power of 2 that's the same and I say 0 0.5 that that would be the same pattern but rotated by 45 degrees and I use these two patterns to filter the image I use this as linear shift invariant filters. I convolve the image with those two filters and then I will take the 
norm of these two images. So uh, let's say I let's open the video again and I just take some I, I take this frame right. <coughs> so if I convolve this image with the first filter this will give me that kind of image and if I convolve it with the second filter it will give me that kind of image let's continue the video a bit uh, let's see I'm sorry, uh, wait mm, ok, now I have an image which is rotated let's see how this one looks like what that looks like now the first filter looks like that and the second filter will look like that. So you can see these two filters, they complement each other. Um, if I take uh, these two images two and the square root of the uh, square of... so I take the square of each image and then sum these two images and then the square root of that, that's basically the no gradient norm there's also a shortcut for this the hypotenuse yeah. so <coughs> now I normalize and display this image and then you will see that this the corners they get highlighted very much with this filter set so I can maybe do it like that yeah. image so I just read the images and I do that in a loop so you can see now this you can use this to detect the corners and I want the corner locations so I'll define myself non-maximum suppression but first uh, I just uh, I mean I add this to the node class yeah, this method so I, I create myself this corner method so just everything I've done earlier <coughs> Let's see if I have the filter definitions. Yeah, here's the first filter. And F2. So now I have the two filters. Um, this would be the image itself see whether that works um, where's the this line, yes so now I should just be able to do this input, read u by it corners, normalize and that's it so now I've just defined myself a corner detector method Okay, now non-maximum suppression, I can just take uh, an image, read uh, an image from the video, take the corners, and that would be in corner image. And there's something called uh, gray level dilation, so I just dilate the image, and if that is, uh, if the image itself is greater or equal than the dilated image at some location it means that at that location all 
values are lower or surrounding values are lower or equal and I can also impose an additional threshold So usually I will create a, a, a relative threshold. So I will say uh, corners maximum times this relative threshold. And then I can, uh, depending where there's a corner, so I'll delay this image a bit. Oh wait, let's see how it, uh, what happens when you just do that. Um, so if you look at this image, you can't see it very well, so that's why I make this dots bigger. Ah. So now you can see the corners are labeled in this image. And they are highlighted red in this image. Okay. So same as before, I'll just create a method which accepts a threshold as a parameter. I say if the image itself is greater or equal to the deleted image um, and the threshold. Yeah. And now I can say show input read u byte corners and this will be the corners. Uh. And then I can say corners non maxima suppression corners uh, maxima maximum times 0 0.6 constant conditional RGB 25500. And I need the image, the corners, like image corners. So I read a color image, then I convert the color image to gray, compute the corners, and then I visualize the corners using this condition. Let's see how that works like that behaves uh, and I need to dilate it again so otherwise you can't really see the corners so that's it it's not too fast so it's only maybe one or two frames per second but it works quite well actually so but you can see that there are still corners in the background So it doesn't work perfectly. And for this I, I use another trick now. So you can, if you take an image, so have this, uh, let's restart the video. Um, let's see, let's take a good image. Ah, this is a bit too fast. Let's take that image and if you uh, let's take the, the gray image yeah. then compute the corners do non maxima suppression of the corners of the corner image.
bin dilate. Uh, let's just see. So you can see the corners here and here uh, as well. So sometimes you get corners in the background. So we want to s suppress those. We want to just have the corners of the grid. <coughs> so what we can do is we can define a threshold and then we just look at the thresholded image. So we say if it's we decide whether it's greater or lower than the threshold, just uh, compare with the image. That would look like that. And we can also use, uh, we can also dilate this image. So we define a constant, uh, dilate, <coughs> so dilated the image would look like this, um, eroded would look like that. So we can define the image, uh, the edges, we can dilate, and we can combine combine with the eroded image or the or erode. Let's see how that behaves. Edges. Um <coughs> It's a very common way of doing uh, edge detection, actually. So it means you take a gray image, grayscale image, and then you binarize it. compute the edges as shown here. <coughs> you can see that uh, the grid gets isolated very well using this trick even though I'm not using adaptive thresholding. So again, let's use the previous image. Yeah, this image. So we can now do connected component analysis on the edge image. There are 30 components, starting with component 0. So now I've assigned a label to each component individually. And you can see one of those components is, uh, is this grid, the edges of this grid. <coughs> so there's a way to find this. And the way this can be done is by just counting the corners on each component. <laughs> That's a whole trick. So again I have this corner image. Uh, corners get... It's basically from the gray image I compute the corners using this method we have defined earlier and non-maxima suppression gives us the corner location <coughs> and what you can do now, you can take the component image 
and mask it with the corner mask and that uh, gives an array with ah sorry uh, using the the non maximum suppression that gives us a sh small array which says the component for each corner if you compute a histogram of that image this histogram will count the components the, the number of corners on each component if I convert this to an array you can see that there's one component with 40 corners um, if we look at the image that's the number of corners we actually expect so we want this inner corner so it's one two three four five six seven eight in that direction and one two three four five in that direction so eight times five is f forty so I'm basically looking for forty components so what you can do is we can compute this histogram and we can check for where this histogram is 40 that gives us a mask and if this mask is true anywhere so it's true if we check through if we do an OR over all values we can compute the ID of this component so we com convert the mask to to an integer array with integers 0 and 1 and we check for the maximum value and that would give us yeah that will find the index of of the component we are looking for actually so if that's the ID so we have now computed yeah, the components a histogram how many corners on each component then we have compared this histogram with 40 so this will give us a boolean array which will be true at one location if we found the grid and using argument maximum so you convert this to u byte this will give us an array if it has a 1 if a component has 40 corners and using argmax we can find those find the um, ID of the component so now if uh, it's a bit uh, indirect <coughs> well basically if we comp compare this components array with with this ID this will give us a boolean array which now it's a boolean mask for with only the edges of the grid so basically we have this uh, method for finding a component with 40 corners so I, I define a method for this so basically just what we've done so we mask with the non-maximum suppression array we take a histogram the number of components and then I just check where the histogram has n value n and if any if this is true for any component then I get the identity uh, the ID of that component <coughs> and I compare with that identity and otherwise I return nil nothing yeah <coughs> so now we can use it like that so we say we have actually width times height 8 times 5 corners so this is width times height is 40 so we can say components if it has n corners using the non-maximal suppression 
and this will either return nil or in this case it will return a mask and that's just the one we have seen before yeah. <coughs> And now we are actually almost finished because we can actually take this mask and combine it with the non maximal suppression mask itself, dilate it by 5, and that's our result actually. So this image only has the corners of the grid. Uh, th here the corners of the grid are indicated but the corners of the background are suppressed now in this image and that's actually all we wanted to ach achieve. So we can now uh, let's rewind the video and then we define a loop so again we read the image we convert the image to grayscale then we extract the corners using the method we have defined earlier using those two filters then we do non-maximal suppression using the non-maximal suppression we method we have defined earlier the method uh, requires a threshold so we use a relative threshold of 0 0.6 times the maximum and now to get the corners of the grid we first create a thresholded a grey level image uh, sorry a binary image and we use erosion and dilation to get the edges of that image, that binary image and so we have the edges now And then we do connected component analysis on this binary edge image. And then we have <coughs> defined a method which checks for a component which has four, uh, sorry, 40 corners on it. And we need to pass that method the binary array of the non-maximum suppression with the corners. And this method either returns something or it returns nil. So it, it either returns the grid edges or nil. So if it returns the grid edges, I can take the result and uh, do a logical AND with the corner mask and dilate this. And then I would display a green corner or and combine with the max with the image. And if the grid was not found, I will just display the corners but I will display them red in this case let's see how that works so you can see the video is running uh, it's red, red means uh, we haven't found the grid, so you can see the corners and the background as well And anyway, the grid is not fully visible at the moment. <coughs> and now there's still problems with motion blur, but now it works. So now the corners and background are gone and it displays in green, so it's detecting the calibration grid now. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. That's this uh, this time it was about how to detect the corners of a calibration grid, and hopefully next time I will show you how to use these corners to do actual camera calibration. Camera calibration is very useful for three D vision. So the most important thing in camera calibration is to determine the focal length of the camera or rather the ratio of focal length to pixel size of the camera so the basic projection constant a basic constant for the projection anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time